Well, it's been a bit longer than I planned. But after Season 3 release, we did get hit with some changes to the new content, so at least now they can all be included here. First, a few quick changes from the start of Season 3 that I didn't touch on in the last Season 3 video. Two damage resist fixes on Gunner. Coil Gun Resist Lasting Forever bug was fixed, so now I can actually use that mod without feeling like a cheese lord. And Auto Cannon's Tier 5 Damage Resist mod is now 50%, which it was intended to be for a while. And Magic Bullets can't bounce off weak points anymore, just terrain. That's a bug fix, too. Related to that, Ricochet Effects had a Hit Detection bug fix, and Variable Chamber Pressure on Bullet Hell affects the damage of the Ricochets now instead of just the direct hit. These aren't huge changes, but they are a small Bullet Hell buff. Direct Corrosion now enables the damage bonuses from Contagion Transmitter and Bullets of Mercy. And a little thing I think many people still haven't noticed. The Drax Electrocution mod now applies the same buffed electric dot that the M1K and GK2 do. Electric Reload, Electric Focus Shots, and Overcharged PCF all have a status effect that does 4.5 damage per tick every 0.2 seconds, lasting for 6 seconds. This matters less for the Drax since there's RNG involved with the 15% electric chance, and the other mods don't compete with it normally. Plasma Splash is only good on impact deflection, and Resonance Amp is just bad. So this doesn't really change how you build the gun, it's just a nice bonus. And lastly, Breeders now require more cool to freeze. Previously, they only took 150 cool to freeze, so you could freeze them with one Cryo Grenade, one Snowball, or two Cryo Bolts. Now they take 320 cool to freeze, which means two Cryo Grenades, two Snowballs, or three Cryo Bolts. Alright, now for the actually new stuff, starting with the grenades. Shredder Swarm grenades are neat little bundles of funny little guys. Their stat screen doesn't really tell you the whole story with these things. It says they hold 5 drones that do 8 damage and last for 40 seconds, but that's not even mentioning that these things inflict two different status effects on hit. So let's get into the nitty gritty here. On release, they home in on nearby enemies within 12 meters, hovering within 4 meters near you if there's nothing in their radius to attack. When in range of an enemy, they'll swipe roughly every 1.1 seconds, inflicting 8 damage in a 1.8 meter radius, which can hit multiple enemies if the enemies are clumped up. After either 12 attacks or 40 seconds, they deactivate. Sometimes, the direct damage inflicted is a bit less, seemingly due to damage falloff, since the attack is doing damage in a radius. This doesn't really matter a whole lot though, especially since Shredders also apply a damage over time effect. Each tick of the dot does 24 damage, which is pretty high, but the tick rate is quite slow, 2.1 seconds between ticks. Unusually, the duration of the dot is actually lower than the tick rate, at 1.9 seconds. It also inflicts, as a separate status effect, a 30% slow that lasts for one second. For a demonstration, here's a Praetorian. Like most enemies, it has multiple different move speeds. 160, 200, and 280. Unlike smaller enemies, this doesn't change based on hazard level. With the 30% slow from Shredders, this becomes 112, 140, and 196, respectively. Since it only lasts 1 second and shredders attack every 1.1 seconds, if a single shredder is hitting an enemy, it won't slow them 100% of the time. That's, again, not a big deal. You can see here that the dot is actually called a damage limiter internally. And in a sense, it does limit the damage, because it doesn't stack. When all five shredders are hitting a single enemy, only one instance of the dot is active at once, greatly limiting the damage it does to a single target. If the shredder's damage was all direct instead of being split between direct and damage over time, they'd mulch individual enemies they gang up on. 
I imagine this was implemented because at some point in testing they were too powerful in that context. And speaking of limits, most of you probably know this, but you can't have more than one group of shredders active at once. That's for performance reasons. If one NG could throw all four of their grenades and have 20 shredders out at once, then a team of four NGs could have 80 shredders active, which would be pretty bad for many players' computers. Also, they're completely immune to friendly fire and deal no friendly fire themselves. I've mentioned more than a few times before that damage over time status effects in DRG will instantly tick once as soon as you apply them, without having to wait for their tick rate to count down. The damage per tick being higher than normal and tick rate being slower than normal on these means getting one tick immediately is higher value. But that's not all. For some reason, when the shredder dot is applied, it actually ticks twice instantly instead of once. The remaining ticks of damage after that are one at a time, as usual. That double tick at the start helps it in general, since it's just free damage, but it especially helps against grunts, where it's taking off close to half their HP immediately. So, each shredder does 7.27 DPS directly, and the dot effect does 11.43 DPS, plus 48 damage on first application. Since the status, like others, does not stack with itself, Shredders will do more damage total if they're hitting different enemies, which is usually what they do if there's enough targets for them to attack. Since they die after 12 attacks, when attacking an enemy repeatedly, they'll attack for roughly 13.2 seconds. If they're all hitting the same enemy, they'll do around 648 damage. If they're all hitting different enemies, they'll do around 1320 damage potentially more if the attacks are hitting multiple clumped up enemies. Since they aim themselves with no friendly fire, they're much more forgiving in terms of positioning and timing than normal grenades. And due to the way they attack, if the group you threw them for gets killed early, they'll still hang around for a bit and can start attacking the next group of bugs that shows up. Plus, nothing resists the damage they do. If Shredders wind up attacking tankier targets, it's not exactly optimal, but they'll still do decent damage. It's very, very easy to get a high level of efficiency out of them, unlike other grenades that you might wind up not having very many good opportunities to throw. They're extremely general use, and especially valuable in messy scramble situations where bugs are spread out and teammates might get in the way, like for instance when a defense objective or choke point is getting overrun. In the right circumstances, Plasma Bursters can clear groups of bugs faster. But you don't always have those circumstances, and they care a lot more about terrain and enemy positioning. Shredders, on the other hand, are extremely consistent. Not to mention, even if you're a very good player, tools aiming themselves is still a very real upside. The rest of the grenades aren't quite as complicated. The boomerang, for instance, is basically just a stun that bounces between enemies. When thrown, it travels at 36 meters per second. This is one of the changes from shortly after the start of Season 3. It used to only travel at 24 meters per second. It homes in towards enemies and prioritizes the enemy you're aiming at when you throw it, provided it's in range. And the range is quite far, 40 meters. It'll bounce off enemies up to a total of 8 times, so it can hit 9 things at most. On hit, it stuns the target for 8.5 seconds, which is very long. Also, it does 35 damage directly, and inflicts an electric effect that does a tiny 1 damage per tick 4 times per second, and lasts 4 seconds. The puny damage is really not the point here, although being able to kill small targets is a nice side benefit sometimes.
What's more important is the stun. If the target is stun immune, like a bulk, then that 4 second electric effect still keeps them in place, because it actually uniquely slows by 100%. And if the target is also immune to normal electric effects, like oppressors and dreadnoughts, there's actually a secondary 50% slow effect that lasts 2 seconds. These effects are sort of consolation prizes. The 4 second immobilize is already much worse than the 8.5 second stun, and the 2 second 50% slow is pretty close to useless on oppressors and dreads. I'll admit, my initial impression of the stun sweeper was that it was basically a weak jack of all trades. It does everything and you have 8 of them, but IFGs are better against big targets and dense swarms, while pheromone or cryonades are better panic buttons. But I've softened my view of these a lot since. That 40 meter range means that you can immediately stop a distant priority target and kill it with ease. So if you are focusing on stopping dangerous enemies as quickly as possible, it's a good take. Plus, it's pretty good against Mactera groups. It doesn't insta-kill them like a cryo well, but it does let you quickly stop try draws from firing and stuns most or all of the pack. Not likely to be my top pick for Scout, but it's by no means bad. Gunner's Lead Bursters, like all of his nades, is a straightforward kill things nade. When thrown onto a surface, there's a short 0.4 second arming time, followed by three bursts of bullets. Each burst consists of 16 volleys of 12 bullets each. That's 192 bullets three times over, 576 total. Each bullet's damage scales based on distance. Base damage is 20, but it falls to 10% of that within 1.8 meters, and increases to 250% past 7 meters. So, 2, 20, and 50 damage based on range. This is presumably done to even out the damage based on range, since up close enemies will get hit by way more bullets. And even with this, enemies normally take more damage up close than far away. Also, it inflicts another damage over time status effect. It's similar to the one on Shredders, and does 50 damage per tick every 2 seconds, and only has a duration of 0.7 seconds. So, again, it only gets to keep ticking while the burster keeps hitting them. And just like the Shredder dot, the tick you get for free when the status is first applied to an enemy is doubled. So maybe that's connected to both of these statuses having a shorter duration than their tick rate. And both the direct damage and the dot on lead bursters are piercing damage, which means less damage against Praetorians and Oppressors, and more damage against Mactera spawn and Goo Bombers. Anyways, in practical terms, these things are pretty simple. They're not as good at murdering swarmers as incendiaries, and they don't kill heavily clustered bugs quite as good as cluster nades, but they are, again, more terrain agnostic since they can hit bugs up on walls, and better against Mactera. Probably your best pick on a Mactera swarm mission. Plus, saturating a whole room with bullets can have some unexpected side benefits. They do tend to hit dwarves in the same room with a stray bullet or two. But that's okay. A bit of friendly fire builds character. But not too much, he said foreshadowingly. Leadbursters aren't good against tanky grounded enemies, but there is one exception, and that's bulks, which they absolutely destroy. You can take out almost half of a Has-5 4-player scaled bulks HP with one leadburster. So, if you've got some of these in your pocket and a bulk shows up, that's a great time to spend them.
And last for Driller, we have the Rippers. That's kind of a similar name to Shredders, so if you have trouble remembering which is which, remember, Shredders soar, Rippers roll. They travel across whatever surface they land on for 7.75 seconds, doing 145 damage on hit. That's 145 explosive damage, which does mean they one-shot slashers, but they also do less damage to guards, oppressors, bulks, and dreadnoughts. Also, they have a friendly fire multiplier of 70%. If you see someone saying it's 110%, that's outdated. Friendly fire also scales based on hazard level, reaching 70% on hazard 5. So on has 5, these do 145 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 equals 71.05 damage. That's still close to half a player's HP, and on a buzzsaw that unpredictably rolls around complex 3D environments. Needless to say, these things are a big friendly fire hazard. You are a lot more safe if you're a gunner, however, because of Gunner's 50% explosive damage resist. Yet another reason this armor upgrade is extremely good. Another value that might be worth knowing on these things is their speed. When digging around in the Ripper's files, I found a couple of relevant values. This initial speed value of 300 seems to be the speed they travel through the air when thrown, and then when they hit the ground and deploy, they accelerate up to their top speed of 1600, aka 16 meters per second, based on this speed COF value. A way to verify this is by racing it with Scout's grappling hook. When moving at the increased 2250 retract speed, Scout moves noticeably faster than the Ripper, But when moving at the default retract speed of 1500, the Ripper is just a little bit faster than you. So yeah, 1600 move speed seems accurate. They also have a damage cap of 950, but it only applies if they hit something and don't kill it in one hit. So for instance, if a Ripper is hitting Praetorians, it'll break on the seventh hit. Not a big deal, that's still a lot of damage. But they won't normally sit there taking all those hits, and it's hard not to compare to a certain other throwable. Since the damage doesn't get boosted against frozen enemies, they're really hard to recommend over axes if you're using the cryo cannon. And to be honest, it's a hard recommendation in general. This is a throwable that is strong in pretty much just one situation, which is you're camping a tunnel that bugs are streaming into. There, Rippers will happily kill weak bugs for about 8 seconds. In any other situation, they're pretty anemic. You'll usually do better damage with your primary, and with much less risk of friendly fire from a Ripper unpredictably rolling around complicated terrain. Because of the strengths of Driller's primaries, you're usually better off with axes to help against tanky single targets. And if you really do want your throwable to help against groups, high explosives or neurotoxin grenades work in much more varied scenarios. In the end, these are pretty niche. They're definitely best on escort or mining missions, due to all the tunnels you have to go through, but even then, I'd often prefer to be able to gas a tunnel for 15 straight seconds, or throw axes at tanky targets. I don't really know what I would change about these, but I do think they're pretty weak. So, that's all the grenades. What about the new Rockpox enemies? Let's first cover their spawn conditions. There's a few ways they can show up, all only on Lithophage Outbreak warnings. One, as initial spawns during cave generation. Two, spawns triggered by players cleaning Rockpox patches, either two to three grunts or a Praetorian. Three, infested boils that spawn on infected terrain, eventually spawning Rockpox larvae. Four, some waves will randomly include rockpox infested enemies, and 5. On mining and refining missions, timed swarms can be swarms of rockpox enemies instead. Once the contagion spikes on the level are destroyed, all of these spawn methods stop. Rockpox larvae are simple. 
They are small, slow, and easily killed, but will more than halfway fill your infection meter if they hit you. As a small aside here, both kinds of larvae have a bite attack with 5 base damage that scales up to 17 damage on Has5 4 player. And then after they do that attack, they jump up and pop. They have parameters for a small AoE poison attack in the game files, so either this is supposed to be that and it's not working because it does no damage, or these stats are dummied out and they are just intended to kill themselves after doing a regular attack. I honestly don't know. Rockpox Grunts and Praetorians inherit the stats of their base enemy type with some changes. They both only take 20% damage and 25% stun time, move at 80% move speed, and attack at 75% their normal attack speed. Their normal melee attacks now inflict the Rockpox status effect, and so does the Praetorian Breath attack. They both get a new projectile that inflicts Rockpox, and they both leave clouds that apply it on death as well. On screen are all of the different sources of infection towards players. If you haven't taken any rockbox for 1.5 seconds, you begin to recover at a rate of 6 per second. And at 100 rockbox, you're immobilized and start taking 10 damage per tick with a variable tick rate of 0.5 to 2 seconds. If you react quickly, you'll probably get out in about 1.5 seconds, maybe a bit slower. Since the tick rate is so variable, the amount of damage this deals to you can be anywhere from 10 to 30 on a quick escape. Usually, you should expect to take 20 damage if you get infected. Also, their normal weak points are not weak points anymore, and instead are replaced by these blisters. They only have 5 base HP, so hitting them directly will always pop them. AoE damage is more complicated, we'll get to that later. They deal a guaranteed 30 damage for Grunts, or 150 damage for Praetorians when destroyed, and are also 2x weak points, but the damage done by your weapon is still lowered by 80%, so it's not very worth it to hit them with something strong. On that table a bit ago, that last blister pop status might have seemed strange. This wasn't always around, and it was added because drillers were bullying Rockpox enemies by just walking at them, holding M1, and popping all of the blisters with their big masculine drills. Now if you're within 3 meters of a Rockpox enemy and pop one of its boils, you receive a debuff that inflicts 35 Rockpox instantly and then another 35 slightly later. Since this is a status effect that doesn't stack, if you pop multiple blisters quickly enough you'll still take the same 70 infection so it's still sometimes worth it to drill bugs. But what about AoE? AoE does affect Rockpox blisters, but the amount of AoE damage required is kind of surprising and subject to some weird quirks. Let's take this base damage Hurricane. It does 20 AoE damage, which you would expect to be easily enough to pop this Praetorian's blisters in one shot. Instead, it takes at least two. The damage is being reduced by two different things. The first is difficulty scaling, which the blister inherits from the host. I'm on hazard 5, 4 player scaling right now, which means this Praetorian has 1.5 damage resistance. So this blister has 7.5 HP instead of 5 HP. That's not nearly enough for this to take two shots yet, but the second thing is that when Rockpox blisters take damage from AoE sources, unlike direct sources of damage, the Rockpox bug's 80% damage resistance is applied. So, in the end, we're actually doing 20 times 0.2 equals 4 damage. And so, it takes 2 shots to take out the blister's 7.5 HP. As for grunts, it actually takes way more shots. A blister needs to be caught right next to 15 of these 20 damage AoE shots to break.
the blisters on Rock Pox grunts actually get 90% resistance to radial damage, unlike the ones on Praetorians. Knowing that, it's easy to math this out. The blister has 5 times 1.2 equals 6 HP due to being on has 5, and we're doing 20 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.1 equals 0 0.4 AoE damage per shot. I'm too weak. Uh, oh. 0 0.4 times 15 equals 6. Exactly enough damage to pop a blister. So, counterintuitively, AoE is far more effective against Rockpox Praetorians than Rockpox Grunts. Blisters getting the 80% damage resist that the bug's body gets when the blister takes AoE damage might be a bug already, but here's another couple of weird bugs. First, the order that blisters on grunts pop to AoE damage is inconsistent. You'd expect the closest blister to pop, but instead which one does seems arbitrary. Second, AoE damage seems like it falls off against these more than it should. Remember the clip I used in the PGL breakdown with Fatboy to demonstrate this? Well, here it is again, rebranded for a new generation. Don't let that dishearten you too much, though. There are still AoE sources that are useful against these. Also, since Breach Cutter isn't treated as radial AoE damage, it shreds Rockbox enemy blisters like nothing else. That's all for the Vibio. Most of this is not about new changes anymore, but hopefully you learned something anyways. Goodbye!